For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles, that know not God. That was from the first letter of the Thessalonians for today's Mass, and in from the Gospel we heard, And lo, a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Words taken from the Gospel and the lesson today for the second Sunday of Lent. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. I would like to begin this mission where we left off the last one. That is, where we left off with God's astonishing reversals. Several kinds of Pacific salmon are spawned in the clear waters of some mountain creek far inland. Far inland from the saltwater ocean. After some months, the minnows begin their journey downstream starting at night. As tiny little fish, they go downstream to the rivers and then out into the ocean. Once there, they live on average about three years, after which time they reverse course to head back up the rivers, switching from the salt water to the fresh water. Once they hit it, amazingly, they don't eat much of anything once they hit the fresh water, but swim and overcome incredible obstacles like rapids and waterfalls as high as 10 feet and many predators like bears and humans too. They are not discouraged by any of these obstacles, but are compelled to overcome them with all their might with all their strength. It is truly an all-or-nothing affair for them, swimming up to 1,000 miles to reach their home waters at times. It's an all-or-nothing affair. And when they finally make it home, they're often deeply scarred from the trial, even missing parts of their fins and bodies. But once home, they lay their eggs and die. But new life comes forth. The life cycle of these fish is an amazing symbol of Christianity on display in God's marvelous creation. It is on display in the life of His Majesty, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord goes forth from the fresh and clear waters of heaven as a minnow being conceived and born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He sets out at midnight at Christmas and then goes forth into the world, the saltwater ocean, at his public ministry, which lasts about three years. And when the time to return home arrives, he swims back, overcoming all obstacles. Thus we have the passion. He overcomes all obstacles for the glory of God and the redemption of man. When he finally reaches the end of his journey, he is deeply scarred from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, and he dies. Yet new life comes forth from his sacred side. As we know, he himself rose up again and opened a path back to heaven for all to follow. And this is what he discussed on the mountain with Moses and Elias. This is the path of our sanctification. The Holy Ghost wants to make us like Christ, so this pattern fits us too. For we are like the minnows he has spawned through the waters of baptism, coming forth from his side, born of the Virgin most pure and most powerful at the foot of the cross. We have the gifts of the Holy Ghost to guide us in the briny ocean of this world, realizing that we're not at home here, and if we are, we're in trouble. We're really meant to die in the fresh mountain streams of grace under the care of the Blessed Virgin Mary so that we can return to the eternal home of heaven guided by the Holy Ghost. We know where home is. It is up. Home is up. And if we listen and respond to Him, we will feel compelled to go there. And listening to Him... In submitting ourselves to his loving guidance, we will contract what has sadly become, it seems, a rare disease in our day. Homesickness for heaven. 
As a result, with the help of God's grace, we will not easily fail or give up. We will not readily fall for the lures of the world, the flesh, and the devil. But we will be willing to go without food and suffer great trials in the swim home, even if it be long and arduous. For the faithful Catholic, this effort to reach the home waters of heaven will be an all-or-nothing affair. No monstrous bear-like evils, no scandals will hinder us. The salmon has an incredible ability to smell his home stream. Scientists have determined that they can detect one part per billion. That's amazing when you stop and think about it. That's similar to tasting a tablespoon of salt in the equivalent of 18 Olympic-sized swimming pools. In other words, one billion tablespoons of water. They can detect salt, as it were, in that amount of water. The Holy Ghost will give us the ability then to see through all the tricks of the devil, to discern the spirits and know which way to go to become another Christ, to be united to Christ forever in heaven. Oh, come Holy Ghost and compel us, compel us to look up into heaven and to swim, swim, swim. Once St. John Vianney was asked why people go to hell, why so many failures and defections among men? He answered very simply, as he was wont to do, because they refused to cooperate with the Holy Ghost. What does the Holy Ghost want us to do? Lift up our eyes to heaven and swim upstream against the current. In the Mass, we say, Sursum corda, lift up your hearts. If our hearts and minds are in heaven, that is the new Jerusalem, united to the heart and mind of Christ, we will hear the word of God and respond. We will listen to the voice from the bright cloud of heaven. This is my beloved Son. Hear ye him. We will be otherworldly and truly homesick. Since things in heaven are holy, we'll begin to grow in holiness, and we will be consecrated in truth as our Lord desired. Using other terms, the universe, that is all of creation, the cosmos, is founded on love, divine charity. Love is the cause of all things. God is love, says St. John. In the 1920s, Sister Josefa Menendez heard the sacred heart of Jesus speaking from heaven, put it like this, It was love that made man and all existing things, that they might be at his service. It was love that moved the Father to give his Son for man's salvation, which through his own fault he had lost. It was love that caused the virgin, who was little more than a child, to renounce the charms of life in the temple and consent to become the mother of God, thereby accepting all the suffering involved in the divine maternity. It was love that caused me to be born in the inclemency of winter and poor and destitute of everything. It was love that hid me 30 years in complete obscurity and humble work. It was love that made me suffer the most ignominious contempt and horrible tortures and shed all my blood and die on the cross to save mankind and redeem the whole human race. And love saw how in the future many souls would unite themselves to my torments and die, D-Y-E, that is, their sufferings and actions, even the most ordinary with my blood, in order to win many souls to me. Thank you, heaven, for telling us these words. Thank you, Sister Josefa Menendez. Love is the solution to all difficulties. With true charity, nothing seems too hard, too difficult. The Pacific salmon... He loves his home waters so much that it spares nothing, not even its own life, in an all-out effort to return home. 
Likewise, true charity in man enables him to overcome any sin, any error, any obstacle that prevents him from having the object of his love. He sells all he owns to buy the field containing the treasure, or all he owns to purchase the pearl of great price. How much more ought man to love and desire his heavenly home where love itself dwells? In this mission, it is my goal and desire to increase your knowledge and most importantly, your love for heaven such that you will always want to be about practicing in this life to go there, making it an all-or-nothing affair. So many are relaxing in the salt waters, enjoying the abundance of food and things available for entertainment and distraction in this world, that they leave off practicing for their return home. They forget God and lose their way and float downstream, as it were, as dead bodies do. But once we practice and practice well, we will earn victory scars to receive a fitting reward and bring forth new life. But to understand what is at stake and make the journey more doable, you have to come to this mission. A mission is a great grace given by God, given by heaven for the faithful of a parish to learn again and how to start anew up the rivers and narrow streams to the home waters. Once again, dead bodies float downstream. Living souls swim to stay alive and receive a reward. Please respond to the graces of the Holy Ghost and come to the mission, not allowing any obstacle of this world to get in your way. Come to learn about those saints who have passed this way before us. Come and learn about how heaven reaches out to help those who practice for its home waters. This mission is to help you do the very same. Come and learn about the church triumphant and its heaven dwellers. The true heaven, not some imaginary heaven that so many dream up today. The heaven God made has architecture. It has order. It has music. It has clothing. It has liturgy, virtue, and many other glorious things that have been revealed to us. And when we look into them, we can learn how to practice effectively here in this life to enter in and take our place in the next. Be sure to take an examination of conscience. It should be available in the back of the church or out near the door to learn what may block our path to heaven. Thank you for listening. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.